What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Fours, we're gonna go over what a set collection type is in Apex. We'll figure out what it is, why it's important, and we'll do an example together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at the set collection type. Uh, we'll figure out what it is, why it's important, when to use it, and more importantly, we'll do uh, examples together in Apex. But before we get into sets, make sure that if you actually enjoy this video, to like it. Because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that want to learn this stuff for free too. So you enjoy the video, like it. Now let's get back to what you came here for. What is a set? A set is an unordered collection of elements that do not contain any duplicates. So you will notice that unlike a list, a set is unordered, meaning it has no order. And unlike a list and a map, uh, which are both ordered, you don't have the ability to get a specific element from a set. Uh, there is no function to get in a specific element from a set because it's not ordered. There is no way to know where it resides. Um, also, unlike a list, a set cannot contain duplicates. Um, maps can't contain duplicates, kind of, either. They can't contain duplicate keys anyway. We'll go over that in the next episode. But unlike a list, sets can't contain duplicates. If you try to put a duplicate value into a set, it will just get overridden. So again, if you need duplicates, don't use a set, use a list. All right, now that we kind of know what a set is, let's go over into IntelliJ and actually create one together, and uh, we'll go over it in even more detail. So I'll bring up IntelliJ over here, and I'm gonna continue to work in this collections example class that uh, I've been working in in the previous episodes. And what I'm gonna do is create a new method and I will create in the same way, but I'm gonna make it integer set example. So we'll say public static void integer integer set example. And we'll create a set of integers together instead of a list of integers. So let's say set integer integer set equals new set of integers. So uh, maybe. <laughs> so we'll see, just like with a, a, a list up here, you initialize your set in a very similar way. The only real difference is that instead of calling it a list, you've called it a set. Now, let's try to add numbers to the set just like we did with the list. We'll say integer set dot add, and we will add an integer, one, right? And then we'll do integer set dot add, and we'll add the integer 200. And then we'll do integer set dot add, and we'll try to add the number one again, right? And we'll see what happens. Now, if you remember, um, up here, if you have multiple uh, similar values in your list, they will show up. And we can, you know, see that if we just run this one more time, we'll run this list example just to see how it works again and refresh our memory. So we'll say in our Apex Anonymous window down here, collections example, integer list example, and run it. And we'll see over here that the number list contains 12, 0, 1, 0, right? So in a list, you can have duplicates, as we already discussed. But again, in a set, it won't allow it. So we'll see if we output this, that this is the integer set. that we won't see this second one in our list. 
So let's go on ahead and do integer set example and run it. And we'll see that in the set, we only have a single one and the number 200. So even though we added the second one, the set just said, I've already got you in here. Um, you can't be here. Goodbye. Uh, that's not really exactly what happens in the background, but more or less, that's what's occurring. In a set, you can't have uh, multiple values that are identical. Um, so it's an important thing to know. Can be useful, can also be not so great. <laughs> One important thing that you should be aware of with sets, we kind of talked about it earlier, is that if I want to do the same thing that I do with my list up here, right, if I uncommented this line, and I try to access a specific element of my set like I did with my list here, I'm not going to be able to do that. So if I say integer set like so to try and get that element, if I try to save that, it's going to fail, right? It's, it's going to fail to save, and it's going to say that the expression must be a list type instead of a set. So what it's trying to tell me uh, down here, which you can probably barely see, with this statement, expression must be a list type instead of a set, is that this should be declared as a list if I really want to access something this way. And also, unlike a list, there's no way to get anything from your set. And this is a product of these sets not being ordered, right? If there is no order to something, there's no way to just say, I want to get this element at this place, right? Because how would it know? There is no ordering, so there's no way to retrieve things. Um, that said, there are ways to still display the values of your set by leveraging a for loop, which again, we have not discussed yet, but just for the sake of showing you that you can still access the integers that you place in your set or the elements that you place in your set, you can if you use a for loop which we will go over shortly in an upcoming episode in much more detail. We can say this is integer and print out the number like so. And if we save this, we can still run this Apex Anonymous. <clears throat> and we'll see over here, this is the integer one, this is the integer 200. So you can still move through this, this uh, set and do things to the set, but you can't just grab a specific element from it like we could with a list and you could with a map. Um, it's, a very, it's very, very important to know that that functionality does not exist. <clears throat> now, what you can do though, surprisingly, at least in my opinion, it's a little surprising, is you can remove remove things from your set. You can just say integer or sorry, you know, set dot remove, and I can say one, right? Maybe I don't want this element one in here anymore, and I want to remove it. Well, this functionality does still exist. You can remove an element by its value in the set. Um, and so if we ran this again and we looked at our uh, debug log <clears throat> that we output, there is no longer the number one, just the number 200 in our set, right? So you do have the ability to remove things from your set by their value, um, but you do not have the ability to retrieve them by their value, unfortunately. Um, so when do you want to use a set? You're going to want to use a set when you want something where order does not matter at all. And your ability to retrieve something from your set, uh, you know, by a get method or like we discussed with the list, <clears throat> doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter that it's unordered and you have no ability to retrieve it, then a set is perfect. Sets are lightweight and fast. Quite frankly, lists, lists are pretty lightweight and fast too, but sets will give you this uh, ability. They also ensure that the data within them is 
unique, right? Um, there is no way to add duplicate values, and sometimes that's pretty important. Um, so if you need to do an operation or create a collection where there are no duplicate values and you want to guarantee that, and again, you don't care about the ordering or the, your ability to retrieve something from your collection, then sets are perfect for it. And you will find that there are tons of scenarios that you'll get into where this is you know, what you want to use. For instance, there are scenarios in Salesforce where you want to collect all of the IDs of, um, you know, records that you're working on. You don't know what they are at runtime, but you want to collect them so that you can go out and query for them. And using a set is perfect for that because you don't need to know what exists in your set. You definitely want to make sure that your IDs and your set are unique. And then you're just going to go use them for a SQL query, right? And um, we will go over SQL queries uh, quite a bit later in this course, but you'll find that sets are very useful for those scenarios and plenty of others. But um, yeah, keys here are there's no ordering. So you don't need to care about ordering and you want to make sure that your collection only has unique elements within it. Um, last thing that we'll go over, just like in the uh, list video, is that there are a number of you know, methods available to you when you declare a set, just like when you declare a list. And we've gone over some of them, but just so you know, there's a whole bunch more, as you can see here. I'm not going to go over every single one, but I'll put these in the notes, and you'll be able to check out each of these if you want to. Just like a list, you have the ability to add elements, add all from a list or a set. You have the ability to clear out your set, clone your set, see whether something is contained within your set. You can't retrieve it, but you can see whether it's contained in it. And a number of other things as well. Uh, you can check all these out. Some of them, just like with lists, you'll find are used more often than others. Um, all right, hopefully that clears up what a set is and why you might use it, and when you might use it. Um, in the next episode, we're going to go over maps. So I will see you then.